So let's talk about the great summer of 98. Um, I was 19. It was one of those summers for me that seemed to last forever, mm-hmm. which was good news because I queued for about three hours on the opening day um, for my first ever ride on Oblivion. Another world's first for the resort mm-hmm. and also quite dark. And mm-hmm. there was always this, what I love about your rides personally is the elaborate backstory. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, how, it, how it came about was, was, it was Walter that suggested to me the idea of a vertical drop. But the problem, the technical problems were enormous because we needed high capacity in, in all the rides at Alton Towers. It wasn't a case of a few hundred an hour. We had to exceed 1,200 an hour at least in order to keep the queue lengths down. Now, if you, if you take a conventional coaster train and you drop it vertically, um, w- what tends to happen is the, as the train accelerates, the front of the train is going vertically downwards. The back of the train is still going horizontally. And as the train accelerates, the back of the train gets whipped over the, the, the edge such that the people are pitched forwards. And it just is, is, is a technical impossibility to do this sort of vertical drop with a flexible, long train. The train has got to be as short as possible. And of course, if the train is short in its length, but has a capacity of, uh, let's say, in excess of, of 12, 15 people, that means it's got to be wide. Um, so... It, we had to come up with a design for a vehicle that was far wider than it was deep. That meant a very, very broad gauge track and a train that overhung the track quite considerably, which again had all sorts of technical you know, difficulties, but, but B&M rose to the challenge. Then we were faced with how do we get a significant vertical drop and not go up above the tree line and keep the planners happy. Uh, and if that meant we couldn't go up in the air, again, we had to go down. But instead of just digging a great hole, I thought, well, what about a, a tunnel, a vertical tunnel, like a shaft that disappears into the ground? And then I thought, better than that, disappears into the ground, and it's not obvious where it's coming out, that you would disappear into oblivion. And the name was obvious, Oblivion. Uh, And again, it was done as a sort of secret project. You can't hide things at Orton Towers when you're building them, but you can use that that secrecy to whip up enthusiasm and interest. And the mistake that a number of parks make is they they hyper-ride up far too early as soon as they break ground, or even before they've broken ground, when they're planning a ride, they start the media bandwagon going, which means by the time the ride opens, the media are a bit fed up with it. You know, it's, it's, it's exhausted itself. Whereas with all our rides, we keep them under wraps, leak a little bit of information out, this intrigue builds up, but then all the media stuff is released in a couple of months before the ride opens. And it works extremely successfully. So they cordoned off the, 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 the area. They had actors posing as security guards, keeping people away. And when people asked what was going on, they had worked to a set script. It was great fun. I mean, it was all, all very carefully calculated. And it worked to treat. And again, Oblivion has been a very successful attraction at the park.